wireless internet that goes 830 miles or over 1300 kilometers if you're not American or British. Amazing. But how is this possible? Believe it or not, this distance was a world record set by using a protocol called LoRaWAN after trackers were installed on a fishing boat off the coast of Portugal and connected to a gateway in the Canary Islands. They were able to do this partly because LoRaWAN uses relatively low frequencies around approximately the 900 megahertz mark. For comparison, most standard Wi-Fi connections use either 2.4 or five or six gigahertz frequencies. Due to the laws of physics, lower frequency signals can travel farther and bend around obstacles more effectively and penetrate through them. But even so, the amount of data that a signal can carry decreases as the frequency gets lower and the signal travels farther. So let's be a little more realistic. What kinds of distances and speeds can you really expect with a 900 megahertz connection? Well, in addition to LoRaWAN, there's also a Wi-Fi standard called Halo, for which devices have just started to hit the market. The ranges are a little bit different. LoRaWAN can get around five kilometers in a city and about 10 in a more rural area where there aren't as many structures to block the signal. However, LoRaWAN speeds are very low, very low. We're talking only as fast as a dial-up connection under ideal circumstances, often lower than that. Halo, on the other hand, has a shorter range of about one kilometer, though it can reach farther under good conditions where you have a clear line of sight. Realistically, speeds can range from about 150 kilobits per second to around 15 megabits per second, depending on how far away you are and any obstructions in the signal's path, though the theoretical maximums are higher. So what exactly is the point of having long range internet if it's so slow? We'll tell you more right after we thank Odoo for sponsoring this video. So what can they Odoo for you? <laughs> well, if you're looking for a high quality website for your business, but lack the coding experience to make it happen, their open source platform is packed with user-friendly drag and drop design elements and features that can help anyone build a gorgeous website. And with Odoo's AI copywriter powered by ChatGPT, you'll never have to worry about creating content. Odoo's website e-commerce application is not only 100% free, it also comes with unlimited hosting, and they even pay for your custom domain name for the first year. Visit the link below and start building your dream website with Odoo. If we're talking about the insanely slow speeds of LoRaWAN, it turns out there are plenty of devices out there that don't need much bandwidth at all. Think about a moisture sensor that a farmer wants to check without having to go out into the fields. Tracking of mass transit buses, or even radiation sensors in nuclear plants that can penetrate through thick layers of concrete. Additionally, Amazon's sidewalk network that uses Echo and Ring products to link IoT devices like sensors and smart lights uses LoRaWAN so that the signal can cover longer distances. And before you helium people start freaking out, yes, helium, crypto, yes, that's LoRaWAN too. And because you don't need much electrical power to move such small amounts of data, there are LoRaWAN devices that can run off batteries for many years before needing to be replaced. Halo's faster speeds though mean that it can be used for applications other than just IoT. Although these speeds are still obviously much slower than the average internet connection, they're still fast enough to complete simple tasks and even video calls at long ranges. This was actually shown recently in a test conducted by the company Morse Micro, which maintained a one megabit per second speed over a distance of three kilometers, even with urban interference. This is cool. It's cool. But most typical client devices don't use the Halo protocol. So what could this mean for you? Well, there are wireless bridge kits that you can buy to send a Halo signal from one location, receive it in another, and then convert it to a more common Wi-Fi standard that client devices like PCs and phones can use. So while it obviously won't replace a regular home Wi-Fi connection and is still primarily more for IoT, it could help with basic connectivity in rural areas without much wired infrastructure. Or if you're just rich, have a huge tract of land and want to throw a bone to the peasants staying in the guest house, this is the protocol for you. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, maybe you want to step back and see just what is a modem and a switch and a router anyway. What's the difference? We got a video on that, check it out.